Greetings, everyone. This presentation is about the design process. And I'm going to show a quick diagram that explains the design process. This is called the squiggle. This was designed by a designer, Damien Newman. And if you look at this diagram, it shows a really complex, intertwined, intricate process at the beginning of the design. And as we move towards the end, it flatlines and get, gets simpler and gets easier. And that's typically how the design process works. You start off with lots of ambiguity, lots of uncertainty. And as you move through the design process, some of that ambiguity and uncertainty reduces as you move towards the end. This front end, the beginning of the design process, is often referred to as the fuzzy front end. And this essentially refers to the fact that in the beginning of the design process, there is less information, less knowledge, more discovery, and that gets less and less as you go through the design process. So this is a complex process. There's a significant amount of uncertainty involved, but there are steps in the design process that can make it easier. So let's walk through these steps of the design process. Step number one can be referred to as phase one in which you identify the problems that you're trying to solve. So the first stage in any situation is that you go into an environment, you look for the problems, because it's very important to make sure that you're solving the right kind of problems. Problem identification is just as important as problem solving. That's phase one. That's the first step in the design process. Step two is to gather information. So once you know the kinds of problems that you want to solve, it's important to go in and use all the different methods that you can to gather information. This could include doing interviews, doing observations, following people around, essentially trying to understand the context in which the problem exists so that you can come up with a solution that is appropriate to that context that you're examining. That's phase two. Phase three can be referred to as capturing insights. What happens in this phase is that once you have identified the problems, once you've gathered a significant amount of information, you can now start to analyze that information, analyze that data, and start drawing some insights from it. This is phase three. Phase four is about now generating ideas. So once you've got these insights from the context, once you've got all the learnings from the research that you've done, you can start generating ideas. And we'll talk about several forms of generating ideas like brainstorming, sketching, as examples of how can you generate new ideas that address the problem that you're trying to solve. The next phase is selecting concepts. Very often what happens in the phase of generating ideas is you come up with a series of solutions, lots and lots of ideas. It's, it's essential to the design process to have as many potential ideas as possible. Once you have that, now you have to start narrowing down. Once you have to, now you have to start selecting some of the concepts that you think are the most appropriate and solve the problem in the best possible way. So that is selecting concepts. The phase after that is referred to as finalizing the solution. So after selecting a series of concepts, you then narrow down into one solution, one idea, and that solution is finalized. So you figure out all the details for that one solution from various perspectives. And then the last phase of the process is implementing the innovation. So essentially what you've done is you've gone through the design process, you've solved the problem, you have a solution, you've designed it, you've detailed it, and the last stage is to actually implement it, to go out into the world and make the solution a reality. Very often what happens in the design process also is once the solution is implemented, you start the process all over again. You look at what works, what doesn't work, how successful it is, how unsuccessful it is, which parts are better, which parts are poorer, and then you improve all of that by going through the entire process all over again. So that, in a nutshell, is the design process. Some key things to keep in mind. It's ambiguous at the beginning, but gets clearer as you move towards the end. And there are several phases of the design process that try to make sense of that ambiguity and of the structure of the design process. Thank you.